Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about over engineering. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick, do software engineers over engineer and create highly complex solutions for simple problems that may not require that level of complexity? Yes, all the time. It's actually funny because I use the uh, uh, I use this as my telltale uh, biggest red flag for how to determine a person's seniority, because I argue that the three stages of software developers is it starts with the junior, and in the juniors at the junior level, most people are just trying to figure out how to do coding overall. And in the mid levels, when you're becoming a philosopher and you're trying to prove to the world that you're pretty good at this whole programming thing, and usually this is also the area where some, like the most, the worst seniors stay. Like they, they get, it, they they start working, they learn a little bit of how things work, and so they can produce some results, and then they get all cocky and. Uh, confident and they stop learning and then but they you know in their head they're like a hundred times better than they are and uh, they get convinced uh, just as those philosophers that there are all of these uh, awesome ways that are better uh, than whatever the juniors are doing that you can do things in and so they over engineer things they over complicate things or pick tools that are like convenient for them but doesn't actually fit into the overall structure and architecture of the system and things like that and they are usually very blind because of ego reasons or because they're so you know naive or like so bought they buy in so hard into different concepts that they can you know they can't see the uh, they can't see the trees for the woods or the woods for the trees or something like that yeah that's basically what it happens and then you have the pragmatic master or like the master level programmers and the master level programmers understand that every solution has to stand in proportion to the problem that you are solving uh, the analogy I like to use is that it is possible for you to you know get rid of like uh, an anthill using an atomic bomb but the question is is that the right tool for the job should you water a plant with a fire hose or maybe it's just good enough to have a little kettle where you can like pour some water which would be more convenient do you think and a good a better time uh, time cost uh, ratio to output that is uh, this is the reason like I do this is actually a uh, the key element that I look for when I interview software developers. So usually when I interview software developers I have a two-step process where, or rather with their, like I prefer to have more steps than that, but usually two steps is the bare minimum, where you have a coding challenge and then you look at the code, uh, you create this challenge that is, you know, fairly straightforward and then you just look if they produce a good result that is you know it's a working thing it doesn't have to be perfect but it is at a decent level uh, that is a good thing but in some cases you see people who go like crazy like they create like really 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 over engineered sophisticated super solutions in even the most basic situations and such a person is actually a very dangerous person to have in the company because you can't trust that they will do a good job you can trust that they share, they know how to write some code, but you can't trust their judgment. This is, as I said, if if you're going to be a, hire someone to be an exterminator, and they roll in with like, you know, a, a set of hand grenades in order to clean out some rats or something like that, like you cannot, as an employer, trust that this person is going to represent your company and make good, sound decisions because they need to understand that. You, you, there, there are certain ways that are more effective to, of doing things than others, and just because they have an idea of that, you know, they're going to reinvent the wheel or they're going to do something in a much better way. The, the, the problem is that sometimes you have an individual who actually does know how to do something better, but it's actually very rare. I find that that is the case. Usually, it is the over engineers who, who are the most quick to do this sort of stuff, and so that's why I try to look for that tell in in the individual so 
it's um, the second part is actually just when you know when you've done the code test is to talk to the individual and give them like just ask pick their brain ask them question very open questions about how they think about software development and if you hear anything around these more you know if you're in, informed yourself you kind of know what's trending you know what is cool and so forth and if that's the all they ever talk about that's a big red warning flag for the, as, and uh, the thing because the thing that you're looking for is an individual who can who can very inf in an informed way say that yes there is this amazing way of doing things but it's probably not the best fit for these situations because that is a person who's gone from oh there's all these other cool ways you can do something to um, from just doing it for the sake of that it is cool to understanding that yeah this is really cool but we should probably not take the risk of using this until we are in a situation where it makes sense so one of my favorite answers to like things like that is and as an example I've had interviews with people like engineers where you know I can immediately tell that they have done this before where they go really deep and like they nerd out about say functional programming and then they say like then they then they finish by saying something along the lines of yeah I'm really into composition and monadic structures and so forth. I think it's really cool it's real but it's really a shame that you don't have as many people who are interested in the industry because usually it's a kind of risky move to add that into a code base because most people are object oriented so usually you, you kind of you know when I set up a product I usually just default to that because I know that it's going to be the simplest thing for for the company usually that is a mature individual that is an individual who understood has understood that it's there's a difference between doing something that is really really cool and over engineered and doing something that is appropriate for the situation if you want to nerd out about something you have to understand that when you are working as a software developer you are doing a job and that is unfortunately something that is very tricky for for, uh, for some people to understand you are a professional who is trying to solve a problem on behalf of an employer and just because you can get away with overcomplicating things or doing you know indulging that part of yourself doesn't mean that you should I like to make the analogy it's like uh, if you were to go to your doctor do you want your doctor to pick the safest solution to fix your problem or do you want them to kind of just mess around with different drugs and experimental treatments and stuff like that to just see how it feels for them food for thought food for thought so what I want you to take away from this is that yes software engineers and over engineer stuff all the time and it's actually one of I would say it's the main reason why you get legacy like if 50 percent is that you have deadlines and like stakeholders and so forth the other 50 is that you cost it yourself through this exact reason now it's not really it's hard to it's hard to blame anybody for this because at the end of the day it's similar to you know it's it's similar to growing up like going through your teens where you know you you kind of know that all teenagers are going to have a period where they're a little bit chaotic they experiment they test boundaries and shit and stuff like that and to me this is exactly the same thing with software developers they also go through this exact thing and the best and most stable solution or like the best thing that you can do for a software developer to kind of get them through this period to get them as quickly as possible to the point where they're actually very informed and mature is pretty much actually the same way as you do it with a, with children you need to have an adult close by that has already been on the journey understands like has the emotional intelligence and all that stuff and can guide them when they need it like not crush them not be curling parallel you know helicopter parents or whatever you call them but to, to be that sort of the voice of maturity and reason and to, to to explain to them why something is a better idea than another thing not just tell them but actually make them understand why to relieve wisdom if that makes sense software developers needs exactly the same thing usually so the best thing uh, to solve over engineering is to always make sure that you have a level-headed mature senior software developer uh, who has the emotional intelligence to connect with the, the engineers who have a tendency to overcomplicate things and stuff like that if you balance that equation if you balance that out you can actually get a really really good result because the over engineers are usually very driven very passionate and like hungry people 
and all they really need is someone to kind of keep them leveled, or like keep them like planted on the ground a little bit. If that's in place, the end result is also usually, in my experience, pretty good. Have a great day.